Um, question number five. How would you invest $20,000 as a 20-year-old? This, this, no, this is probably the perfect answer to, to, no. to this. But I, I think I would take 25% of it, like five grand, if you had 20 grand, and I would invest it in education. You know, um, start with, you could start with podcasts, which are free anyway. You know, you could buy books, you know, you could buy a truckload of books for $1,000. Um, and then you could invest in a couple of courses that you feel uh, would really make a big difference. I reckon you take another, um, uh, probably 25% as well, so the other quarter, and put it into uh, a low-cost uh, index fund. There's like some, you know, ETFs, um, you know, like the S&P, even if you just did the S&P 500, and just something to start because I wish I started – you know, much sooner. I lost a sort of a decade of compound interest because, you know, I was just like, oh, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. So if you can develop the habit of just starting to put aside 10% of everything you make and just, you know, chuck it in there. And even if now they've got these tools that are just like auto debit, where, you know, the moment you pay hits your account, you know, any money hits your account just takes 10% and it just disappears and it goes into your, um, you know, long-term uh, compounding account. Uh, then probably 25% you'd have, basically for your deposit for your property and so it's good to see that amount of money there and go okay well if you know for order for me to get my you know, first property i might need to get to um fifty thousand dollars or something along those lines and so uh, i'm at five now i'm already kind of like started what do i do to keep getting to that kind of goal of being able to defort, afford my deposit and then the other five grand you i'd probably recommend either having this cash or getting ready to maybe invest in some type of a business. Now, you could argue, well, why don't you just chuck that in the compounding account and just let that compound until you maybe need it for mm. a, some type of a business that you may want to start in the future. But I think that kind of little quadrant of education, shares, property, and business, that's kind of a pretty balanced you know, way of going about it. Yeah, I like it. You know, speaking of compounding interest, I, was, I saw an interview with Warren Buffett the other day. And he said something like, he, he first stocks he ever bought, he spent $127 on, on the stocks in nine, it was like in 1950. So it was the first parcel he ever bought. And he said, if I just invested that in, a, in an index fund in the S&P 500, today that would be worth $450,000. <laughs> so that's the power of compounding interest, right? Wow. Yeah, I know, I know. It was like he actually said, "He said this will blow your mind." That's how he started this conversation. <laughs> so, anyway, I think he knows a little bit about investing, old Warren. Do you own an investment property? Washington Brown has helped over two hundred fifty thousand property investors pay less tax with the depreciation schedule. Visit washingtonbrown.com.au to pay less tax today. <laughs>